So this time we're going to calculate Kp and we need to know about partial pressures. So to calculate partial pressures we need to consider the ideal gas equation which you looked at last year. So if you're a bit rusty on this I suggest you go back and have a look at it. Basically we're looking at PV equals nRT so that means it, um, we can rearrange it to say that the pressure is proportional to the number of moles and also proportional to the temperature. So as we increase the number of moles of gas or if we increase the temperature then the pressure will also increase. On the other hand it's inversely proportional to the volume so that means that if the volume increases we're going to decrease the pressure. And just to remind you about the units here, strictly speaking it should be um, metres cubed for um, the volume and it should be pascals for the um, pressure but we can also work in kilopascals and decimeter cubed and um, that's what we're going to be doing in this. Also just to remind you that we are making a few assumptions here because it's an ideal gas we're saying that um, the particles, the gas particles are constantly moving in a random way. Um, there are no intermolecular forces between the um, individual particles. Um, we are saying that all the collisions are perfectly um, elastic and there's no kinetic energy being exchanged there and also just for the purposes of this we're saying that the particles themselves don't occupy any volume so the volume we're talking about is the volume of the cylinder or the valve. Now obviously if we've got more than one uh, gas in a particular container the overall pressure is going to be the sum of the pressure from each of those gases. So I've got a little picture here, here's my little box with um, a blue gas, a green gas and a red gas. Now if we just had the green gas in there we would have less pressure being exerted on the box on the container than if we've got the green and the blue or the green, blue and red. So we've got this idea that the more gas or the more individual gases you have making up the total pressure, the more the overall pressure is. On the other hand, we could say that if we just have one gas there, then it will exert less pressure. And the pressure for that particular gas is called the partial pressure. So the partial pressure is the pressure exerted by a gas in a mixture of gases as if it occupied the same volume that it's in with those other gases but on its own and at the same temperature. So if we took out all the other gases, kept the volume the same and the temperature the same, we work out what the pressure would be by that particular gas. Okay, so let's look at an example. Here we've got uh, sulphur dioxide reacting with oxygen um, and so we've got gases for products and reactants. So in an analogous way to how we um, calculate Kc, for Kp it's the partial pressure of the product um, divided by the product of the partial pressures of the reactants. Um, and as with Kc, if we've got two uh, moles in our stoichiometric equation, then we um, raise our partial pressure to a power. So for example here we've got uh, partial pressure squared. Um, just take care here, we are not talking about concentrations anymore, so don't put any square brackets in anywhere. We're talking about partial pressures. So, what about this one then? We've got calcium carbonate decomposing into calcium oxide and carbon, carbon dioxide. What will Kp be? Have a try and work it out for yourself first. Well, the expression for Kp will be um, the partial pressure of the products over the partial pressure of the reactants. But if you notice, we've only got one gas here. Um, we've got calcium carbonate and calcium oxide, which are both solid. So the only species that will appear in our Kp expression will be the partial pressure of PCO2. Here we go. Kp is equivalent to the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. The solids don't appear in the equation. So if we're going to work out what the partial pressure is, we need to know how much of a particular volume is taken up by a particular gas. And to do this we use something called the mole fraction. So if we have a certain number of moles in a mixture then the mole fraction of a particular component will just be the number of moles of that particular component divided by the total. So it's just the fraction of moles within a certain mixture. 
So going back to our little picture here of our gases mixed together in a in a box. Here we've got blue, green and red gases all in a container. Um, and if we want to determine our partial pressure, we need to know the contribution to the total pressure made by the individual gas in an equilibrium mixture. But to do that, we need to know how many of those moles, total number of moles, came from a particular component. So let's call the total number of moles n. Okay, so we've got n number of moles in our green box. And we want to know what the partial pressure of our red gas is. So say we've got a little n number of moles of our red gas. So we've got a smaller number of moles of um, our red gas within a larger number of moles of our mixture. Now we know that the total pressure is P. So basically the partial pressure of our red gas here will just be the fraction of the moles that is made up by n times the total pressure. So, for example, if we had four moles overall in our uh, mixture, but only one mole came from our red gas, then a quarter of the total pressure would come from the red. So N over N will be our mole fraction. So that means the partial pressure of a gas will be this mole fraction times the total pressure. And that's a general equation, but it's good to understand where that comes from so that you can remember it. Now, the other way round... Um, also works. So if you think about it, the sum of all of these partial pressures of the components in, an, in a mixture will equal the total pressure. And so a check that you can do after any um, calculation like this is simply to add up the mole fractions and check that they add up to one. If you're dividing things up into different fractions, those fractions should come back together again and make one.